Our camera rolls can be extremely messy and sometimes it's impossible to find the photo that you're looking for. So I developed a method for quickly finding any photo or video on your phone. I'm gonna show you the inner workings of my phone and reveal how this is possible. If you're like me, I bet you have some really incredible photos that you've taken, but by sifting through images individually without a plan, it's gonna to be tough to find these photos. To be able to find what we're looking for, you'll need to understand four techniques to find the photos you're looking for quickly. Plus one of these ways is so obvious that you're gonna kick yourself if you're not already doing it. Before I show you the specific way that we're gonna be doing this, let's chat quickly about the approach that we're gonna take. The trick to all of this is that we're gonna be narrowing down where we are looking. Right now, I have 37,000 items in my camera roll. It's impossible to look through this many photos and videos manually, well, at least not quickly. Rather than searching chronologically or by memory, we need to narrow down where we're looking and what we're looking at. It's much easier to look at 300 photos, 30 photos, or ideally three photos to find the exact photo or video that we're looking for. Have you heard of GeoGuessers? There's this one channel called Rainbolt that keeps coming up on my suggested videos on YouTube. It's this dude who can look at Google Street View photos and within a few minutes, sometimes a few seconds, he can pinpoint exactly where on earth that photo was taken. The exact continent, country, city, intersection, and direction. It's really impressive. I found out he's not the only guy that does this. It's a game where you're given images from Google Street View and you have to figure out where it is. After you watch a couple of Rainbolt's videos, you'll hear his rationale for how he finds these locations so quickly. His approach is to narrow down his search by creating parameters. So he's looking in one city or along a certain road or for a specific color of building. In this example, he's looking for a playground. He found the account that posted this original video and visits their profile to see where all the videos are posted from, and he confirms it's Alaska, which drastically narrows the area that he's searching. He then runs a script that uses data from maps to show him schools with playgrounds, which narrows his search even smaller, and then begins looking for the same paneling on the outside of schools on maps, which leads him to find the location the video was taken. Now, all of that makes sense for Google Street View. Use the visual clues to help narrow down places to look. But how do we use that for our camera roll? I am looking for a video from a safari I was on in Kenya. It was the first safari I've been on. Actually, it's the only safari I've been on. And I couldn't believe how many animals we saw and how close we could get to them. The first tool in our arsenal is to narrow down our search by location. On the Albums tab of the Photos app, we can scroll down and pick places under People and Places. On this map, you can see all the places that I've taken photos and videos in. And because we're looking for a photo from my safari in Kenya, let's scroll over to Kenya. And when we zoom in, we can see all the places that I visited, or at least all the ones that I took photos in. The more I zoom in, the more precise the locations get. Now, if you're not seeing this on your phone, we need to make sure that you've enabled the proper permissions so that your phone can pinpoint exactly where your photos were taken. This is probably already enabled on your phone, but just in case it isn't, head over to settings, privacy and security, location services. Look for the photos app and make sure well using app is checked as well as precise location. If you're not seeing this, there's a chance you're not on the latest operating system, so update your phone. Each picture and video we take stores a lot of metadata connected to the image. To see what's being stored, we can swipe up on the photo and you can see when this photo was taken, the model and make of the phone that took this photo, which lens, the size of the file, the name of the file, and most importantly in this case, where the photo was taken. I could manually zoom in and tap into each location on this map to find the video I'm looking for, which works, but I'll also show you another way to search by location, and that's right through the search tab. Right here, we're already prompted to search for photos, people, and places. So let's type in Kenya, and our search has been narrowed down to 154 photos. And as I look through these, this is the video I was looking for. It's a photo of my friend Tanner taking a photo of a lion, in the safari jeep we were in. But what happens when you don't travel a lot? All of your photos are from home or probably the same few locations. So I'm looking for a photo of Zandali for when we went for ice cream and I don't remember where I took it. All I know it was in Calgary, which is where I live. And I have 10,500 photos from Calgary. 
There's a bunch of locations of this ice cream chain, so it would take a while to search around at each location. There's no way I'm finding this video using the location method. Another way we can search through our camera roll is by searching a person's face or something else memorable that's in the photo. If we type Zandali's name into the search bar, all of these photos of Zandali pop up. How does my phone know who Zandali is? Under people and places, there is a list of people that appear in my camera roll regularly. I've labeled them and I've actually connected them to the contact info that I have stored in my phone. If you visit this section of your phone every few months, it will ask if the new photos of these people are actually the correct people. Now that my phone knows who Josh is, any new photos of Josh are going to be searchable. Looking for photos of Zandali, here's all the photos of Zan and it's narrowed it down to 2,600 photos, which makes sense. I probably have the most amount of photos of her. If I was searching for Josh, I only have 30 or so photos of him. Our phones are using AI and are examining the images and adding keywords to each photo. The camera roll groups photos that are similar into keyword groups like baby, vehicles, snow, mountains, food. This means I can try searching elements and photos for what I'm looking for. So I can actually combine Zandali's name with the search term ice cream. And just like that, this is the video I was looking for. If I were looking for somebody else holding ice cream, I could just search the term ice cream or search for more general terms like flowers, cars, mountains, or even more specific terms like Versailles or Calgary Tower. Before I show you the next method, YouTube just let me know that you're likely part of the 98.7% not subscribed. If you've made it this far, chances are you like what you see and well, you know, let's change that ratio. This time I'm looking for a video from this film set I was a part of a few years ago. We were shooting somewhere in Southern Alberta, I think, and I don't know where it was exactly. And I know there were some people in the videos, but I didn't take that many videos that day. So I don't think there's enough data on these people to search by face. I tried using the search term camera and the video didn't come up. All I know for sure is that it was taken sometime in spring 2022. I think the most common way that we look for photos in our camera rolls is to scroll back in them chronologically, looking for 2022. This works, but it's not fast or precise. This is where we can try our third search technique, searching by time. Using the search bar, we can just search using the word spring, or April, or May, or even the exact date if we know that day. I know that this video was taken in April 2022, and there's the video. This is a much faster way of finding the right time frame. Sometimes it's finicky. I find that if I search for photos and videos from a few days ago using an exact date, the app doesn't seem to like this. I didn't take these photos on that day. You'll have to play around with your search terms. I find searching the month or the month plus the year is the most effective when you can't search by location, person, or object. This final way to find photos is so obvious, there's a great chance you're already doing this. And that's to create your own folders or albums. I create folders of social media posts waiting to be queued up, memories from past trips, or specific photo shoots. This can be one of the fastest ways to have a collection of your photos in one place so that you can pull them up really quickly. The downside to this method is that you have to manually add your photos to these albums, but it can also be really effective because you're in control of exactly what goes into these folders. Another way that I do this is by maximizing my favorites album, you know, the folder where all your hearted images go, as a place to store things that I reference frequently, like funny videos, accomplishments, or important measurements. I should probably clean mine up a little, but even with like 600 photos in here, people are always impressed with how quickly I can locate what I'm looking for when it's in this folder. As a reminder or bonus tip, I quickly mentioned earlier that if you combine a couple of these search terms and techniques together, I'm confident that you'll be finding the photos and videos you're looking for in seconds rather than minutes. Something worth noting is that the less images and clutter and screenshots and duplicates in your camera roll, the easier it is gonna be to find what you're looking for. There's not enough time in this video to touch on how to reduce the clutter and amount of that junk in your camera roll, but if that's something that interests you and you'd like to see me make a video on that, please let me know. If you've enjoyed this video, consider watching another. YouTube thinks this video right here is right up your alley. Thanks for letting me spill the gravy and we'll see you in the next one.